Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, nice to meet you, Frank. So, could you introduce yourself briefly and about Newbit? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Yu Feng. I'm a founder and CEO at Newbit. I'm also a CS professor at University of California, Santa Barbara. And then, so we built Newbit uh, early this year. So basically what Newbit is about is the first decentralized con consumer network uh, secured by Bitcoin. So here we have two keywords. One is what do you mean by consumer network? So the consumer network help like a bridging traditional Web2 developer into Web3 without worrying about all those online details. They don't need to learn about a smart contract. They need to learn about like L1, L2, those compact. And so what do we mean by secure by Bitcoin? Because the entire network is decentralized. So which means that, and there's many, many like a uh, public blockchain. How am I going to trust like a particular blockchain, right? We're only going to trust that because it's going to act secure as Bitcoin, which is one of the most authentic blockchain in this world. And then we do that through by Incorp like incorporate a whole bunch of Bitcoin miners and staker to basically staking their like access to ensure the entire economic security of our system. Okay. So Newbit originally launched with a focus on secure data availability. Mm. So what drove your shift to bridging Web 2 and Web 3? That's a very good question. So originally, um, we tried to mitigate the throughput and storage costs at Bitcoin because we know that Bitcoin is the oldest blockchain. It's very authentic, but it's also very slow. Slow in the sense that it can only process four transactions per second, whereas traditional like bank network can process like a thousand, th tens of thousands of transactions easily. So we do like a build Bitcoin DA as the original narrative, and then we manage to basically help a lot of L2 infrastructure in the BTC ecosystem to scaling their throughput and storage. But once we achieve that goal, we realize that the entire ecosystem, uh, they are still suffering. So what do we mean by suffering is that like the entire system is still like um, lacking of tractions. So here, what do I mean by tractions? Are those tractions are actually coming from the consumer perspective. So which means that in order to onboard like uh, billions of users to Web3, we have to first like onboard, let's say millions of developers so that they can build hundreds of thousands of publications and then ideally, they should be building that without worrying about, worrying about those complex details of blockchain. And that's basically how we made this kind of transitions. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, what are the main challenges in achieving seamless integration between the two and the three? And how is Nubit addressing this? Yeah, so that's uh, another great question. So basically, as you probably know that like the, there's already a whole bunch of building blocks in the blockchain space already. We have a whole bunch of L2, we have a whole bunch of L1. We also have um, like a whole bunch of different kind of storage system. Um, but the problem, the, cha the most challenging part is what I call the last mileage problems. The last mileage problem is the, in the sense that how did you connect everything together in a way that the traditional Web2 developer, they don't need to worry about the online details. And the way we do that is similar to how WeChat or Telegram like onboard their own like a mini application in the sense that we try to wrap up everything underlying uh, what we call a decentralized SDK. So those this decentralized SDK, you can think of what they do is that they can basically abstract away all those kind of a complex blockchain detail so that the, uh, uh, the application developer, all they need to decide is to decide, hey, what are the data that need to be put stay off chain and what other data need to stay on chain they just need to make this decision, but they don't need to worry about how. Yeah. yeah. So, Nubit, powered by Bitcoin, is another fundamental uh, foundational element of their ecosystem. Yeah. So, how does Nubit enhance the security and scalability of the platform, uh -huh. particularly for Web2, Web3 integration? Yeah. So, basically, as I mentioned earlier, so Bitcoin, let's look at Bitcoin first. Bitcoin is the oldest, but also the most authentic like a blockchain yes. um, in the world. Um, it has its advantage, but it also have a lot of disadvantages because it's very old, So, which means that it can only ha handle four transactions per second, which is very, very tiny, in the sense that there's no way the entire ecosystem can survive with this amount of transaction. But the question is that if I build a random, let's say, DA to help everybody else to store their data, nobody is going to trust me, right? Because like, why people want to spend a lot of money buying diamond and gold, right? Because diamond and gold, they are authentic. They have values. 
Um, so, so which meant in that case, like the only convincing point that people want to put their data on our DA is because if we can make it as authentic as the original Bitcoin. So what make like Bitcoin authentic? So it's actually those miners and staker because at Bitcoin, like the entire economic security and decentralization is actually guaranteed by countless miners as well as Bitcoin staker. So which means that what we do is that we first use a proof of stake protocol, which is much, much more efficient than proof of work and also energy efficiency. So once and then we dramatically increase the throughput. But we, in addition to that, we also like onboard a whole bunch of Bitcoin staker through the Babylon protocol so that the entire economic security of Bitcoin DA, new BDA is actually guaranteed by those stakeholders. Um, so how does Nubit help Web3 projects tap into Telegram's user base? What are the unique challenges and opportunities when bridging blockchain functionality to a Web2 platform like Telegram? Yeah, that's a very good point. So because, um, as I mentioned earlier, so basically we have a lot of great like Web3 uh, founders. They spend a lot of like effort building their chains, building their like protocol. But after that, almost everybody is suffering from mass adoptions. Basically, they build a whole bunch of protocol, but no one used them. And, uh, and then, and one of the, like, luckily we have Telegram, which already have billions of users. So now one, one like, a, like a requirement from those Web3 projects is that they want to, like, connect their existing service to those, like, a gigantic community, like, based in Telegram. But the question is how, right? So, of course, they can learn Telegram from scratch, and then they try to make design special API to connect with their existing protocol. But that's not going to scale because like uh, they are, those are something they are not familiar with. And that's what, where we design this decentralized SDK that I mentioned earlier. And those decentralized SDK will allow them to organize the original protocol in a way that you can build those kind of Telegram app in a very, very clean way without worrying about like where those data are coming from, how you're going to store them, etc. How do you envision the evolution of the Web2 and Web3 ecosystems over the next three, five years? And what role do you see Nubit playing in the future? Okay, so I think in the next two to three years, I believe that especially for the entire like Web3 ecosystem to thrive, I think they need consumer. They really need consumer because we already have a bunch of like infrastructures. And right now what we really need is actually tractions, especially for those tractions that can actually impact uh, like everybody's life. Otherwise, when the bear market comes, and the, so basically the entire infrastructure is going to become a digital casino. Um, so, and how do we see that in the future? I would say in the future, the barriers between Web 2 and Web 3 is going to gradually disappear because we don't want to build everything from scratch right those web 2 projects they already have tons and tons of experience building solid applications that attract users so which means that what we need to do is actually like making those people come to web 3 a little bit easier and same thing like we have a lot of great founders in web 3 and then so they also want to outreaching to the traditional web 2 community and application and user so which means that what I envision is that in the future, those kind of barriers are going to disappear and then new bit, um, new bit infrastructure is going to play, I hope that it's going to play a very important role to smooth everything. Yeah. So is there any question you want to answer? Um, any, any question you want to answer? Any questions? Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I think uh, I don't, I, I know that like, uh, like Korean has a very like a like a big like a market in terms of gaming, in terms of gaming. So if possible, I would like to ask what like what are those like what are the status of those like a gaming's like a go to market strategy and how what's your strategy in terms of like coming to like uh, the Web three like horizon? Oh, so uh, I was just like asking what kind of questions do you want to answer for for. Uh, so, asking for yourself, a question for yourself. Uh, I, to ask, like, what's your vision? Oh, so, so you, the, the, the vision to, to the user? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
What's yeah. your what's Nubis' vision for the future? Maybe. Oh, the future is that um, I think so. Like basically, what we want is that uh, we want to build uh, both infrastructure as well as um, a cost-effective service to basically like bridge the gap between traditional like a consumer user to um, Web two, I'm uh, sorry, Web three on chain infrastructure, and would like to like make this whole entire business scaling. I imagine we envision that they, those will be scaling exponentially, hopefully, in the next uh, couple of years. Okay, thank you for your interview, Fang, mm -hmm. and nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you for having thank me. You very, thank you, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, thank you, Tony. Bye.